Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition, where we're big fans of giving you insights and information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. So are you in the mood to create a musical masterpiece? Well if so, then here's five things I think you need to know about. Composition. Composition is a word game in which you take on the role of a musical maestro creating compositions. You start the game with your own character, who has a special ability, and three letters. On your turn you'll draft letters from the note deck to combine with your own in your hand to make words. All the while keeping only the letters with lock symbols between turns. Words then score roses based on what letters you use and might meet the requirements for an ovation card too. You can spend your roses on awards, which can permanently enhance your hand, or on crescendo cards to work towards a big turn. The game ends when either awards or ovation cards run out, and the winner is the person with the most awards at the end of the game. Thing one, what's this game all about? Well, composition sets you up as a composer who is trying to create a musical piece um, each round of the game. Um, but what's really happening is that, well, this is a word drafting game. So on your turn, you will draft letters into your pile um, in an attempt to create words and win roses and ovations for your efforts. Um, this combining of word game meets music, I think is a really fascinating one. And it's done incredibly well here, where there are cards like crescendo cards, there are the notes deck, the fact that there are roses um, and ovations for your successful scores is all really nicely put together. Um, I think that the theme is very, very strong in this game, which is kind of unusual to say for a, a word game. Um, and only that, I thought the theme was quite fun and kind of joyous and a little bit entertaining. Um, despite, you know, at the end of it all, it, it's still a word game, but these touches kind of definitely added something to it. Now, similar games to composition. Well, I have to say something like Scrabble because it does feel like that in the sense of, well, you're scoring words and you're trying to get certain multipliers to make your word score even better. You've got all of that here. Um, but composition does have its own sense of charm and whimsy that I think kind of separates it a little bit from those traditional word games. Thing two, mechanics. Now, composition, um, despite it being kind of a, a family weight card game, does have a lot of mechanisms going on within it. And I'm not sure I'm going to be able to cover them all in this video, but I'll make a valiant effort just so you get a feel for exactly kind of what's going on in the game here. Like it takes up nearly a page worth of notes just, you know, to take note of them all in shorthand. Um, so I'm going to start out with the fact that when you start composition, you have a character you play and you get a set of three letters. Um, the character comes with its own special ability um, and I declare that that's probably one of the best features of the game. Um, they're usually quite interesting things and you find yourself, you know, wanting to abuse them in particular ways to get the best benefit. Um, now, starting with these three letters um, is important because you also get to keep them between rounds. Um, so normally you will draft cards, create a word, and then the words or the letters you use get tossed aside and you start again. But you get to keep those three starting ones no matter what. And I really like that touch. It means that no matter what, you could always make a word every round and earn some roses for your words. Now, roses are the currency of the game and you get them from completing words and the value will, depary, will vary depending on um, exactly which word or which letter has whatever amount of roses on it. You know, it goes with difficulties and things like that. Um, and roses are used to buy some of the end game scoring things, um, which are often letters that can be permanently put in your deck, which is always a good thing, or sometimes abilities. There are also the crescendo cards, um, and these you have to pay five roses to buy, and you purchase them upside down. Um, some of them are good, some of them are not so good, and you've no real idea because they're upside down, so we weren't a big fan of having to buy them sight unseen, because roses are pretty valuable if you want to win the game. Um, but yeah, so that's the story with roses. Okay, there are also negative cards in both the note deck, which is the one you get all your letters from, and in the crescendo deck called Rotten Tomatoes. Um, and these are completely random in how negative or, or positive maybe they might be. And you know what, as annoying as and all as they were, I kind of like them. They weren't the most terrible thing. 
Um, and finally, I suppose I'll get to the ghost note. Um, so every round when you draft cards, there is a ghost note at the end and it counts as a wild. Um, and we found ourselves fighting over that a lot. Um, and I'd also forgotten that when you create words, um, some of them have musical notes. And if you can collect sets of these musical notes, you can have more roses. Um, but I found that there just wasn't enough cards with musical notes to warrant collecting these. Um, and it felt a little bit like an, an overthought or an oversight. You know, it was kind of unnecessary. And I feel like that actually about a, a lot of the mechanisms in the game. It feels like there's just one or two too many that were unnecessary. That this would have been better if it was paired back. But despite that feeling, this game really actually works very, very well. And I really enjoy the theme and I love how the mechanisms reflect all of the theme. You can hear that as I talk about it, right? This is all musical jargon. Um, and it is put together very, very well. Um, mechanics wise though, I think you'd really, really want to love word games to really get into this. Thing three on the table. Now composition doesn't really have much of a table presence, but I do feel like it would draw you in with its very cute and adorable artwork. Um, setup is quick and it doesn't take up a lot of space on the table either. It took two of us about 40 minutes to play um, and that's entirely contingent upon how long you spend looking up words on Google or how focused you are on getting the exact word to get the extra word scores. Um, the rulebook could do with a little bit of work and some of the cards too. Um, they're definitely ambiguous or the language definitely needed a bit of tidying up but it didn't interfere necessarily with gameplay, it just left us with a couple of questions. Now, replayability wise, well, you're creating different words every time you play, right? So of course there's some variability there, but this is kind of ramped up by the fact that the ovation cards and the award cards change every time you play. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, I'm not gonna lie, it was the box art that drew me to this game in the first place. I think we all love a good anthropomorphized animal with a job to do. Um, but those animals aren't really carried through so much in the game. Um, the character you start with is indeed one of the animals, but beyond that, we don't see any more of that really, really cool artwork. Um, but this game does have a sense of style all of its own. It feels very, very polished and put together. Um, the component quality here is very, very good. The cards are very nice and the little roses tokens are quite lovely, but that's really all that's in the game. There isn't a whole lot to judge here, apart from its size of the box, which I think is a nice touch actually. Small game and small box makes sense. Um, overall, this game is very, very appealing and it's definitely got a look that's kind of all its own. Thing five, is this game actually any good? I think if you're a fan of word games, you're gonna absolutely love composition. It combines all of those traditional things where you know, you're given a jumble of letters to make up a word and adds in all these kind of extra ways of scoring or extra parts to make it all the more exciting and maybe a little bit interesting. But I do feel like you gotta enjoy word games in the first place to appreciate all these adjustments. Um, now, I'd like to point out that this game comes with an app. It's called Google. Um, and I know I spent a considerable amount of time while playing the game on my phone looking up words um, in the hope I would get the right ones or how many letters were in this or is this even a word? Um, and I think that detracted from gameplay quite a bit, but I do think that is the nature of word games. So that will depend upon you as the player, how happy you are to be you know, researching while playing. Um, my biggest stippler with the whole game um, is the fact that on the one hand, there's no direction in what you're trying to do, right? So it's just like, here, have some letters, go off and make a word and do your best, right? Um, and I wish that it was more focused somehow, like maybe there had been categories or something, you know, come up with a word that adheres to food or something like that. Um, but then the more I thought about it, the more I realized, well, the game actually does have tons of ways in which it's pushing you towards particular things. So there are ovation cards where you want to complete like the quest they've given you. There are musical notes. You want the words to get together. A lot of the letters have their own stipulations too. And despite all of those being there, I, I never felt like they were important enough to override the overarching puzzle of, I have to come up with a word at the end of this round. Um, I find that all these additions are interesting, but they didn't really drive gameplay. It just felt like we're still playing Scrabble. I still have to come up with a word at the end of the day, despite all these extras. Um, overall though, I think that composition is a very good game. And it's very close to being great. I think if it could tidy up those issues in the rule book and on some of the cards, this would be a farm family favorite for a whole bunch of people. 
Um, overall though, I think this is a great word game. I think it'd be great for families, but I think you're really gonna like your words first. So do I think you should have composition in your collection? Well, I think if you're a fan of word games or music games, then you really should be checking this out. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about composition, shout them off in the comment box below. Tune in again next time for some more short and informative board game reviews.